Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of the Bad Times Good Stories Podcast. My name is Joe Flanders, and I hope your August is off to an amazing start. I mean, I guess at this point it's, what, halfway done? Almost? Boy, the summer's really flying by, isn't it? Uh, Things are good on uh, my front and my back. (laughs) Uh, today on the show is my cousin and friend, Andy Beersack. Andy is the lead singer of the rock band Black Veil Brides. He also has a solo career as Andy Black. You can check out the latest Black Veil Brides album, and the upcoming Andy Black album will be coming out early next year. You can also watch Andy and I together on The Andy Show. You can check it out at theandyshow.tv. We've released four seasons of content, and uh, it's a lot of fun. I enjoy getting together with him and and our friend Patrick, friend of the show, Patrick Fogarty. Three of us meet up every week and uh, talk about the goings-on of our awkward and goofy lives. This is actually a re-airing of the original episode of this podcast, where we talk about uh, Andy breaking his ribs in the famous Hollywood and Highland show back in 2011. Uh, I wanted to share this episode with you guys because I noticed on iTunes, for whatever reason, the feed stops at episode seven. So it is not available. And uh, as the show is bringing in new listeners each week, some of you may not have heard this one. So I wanted to share it with you. You'll notice that uh, my co-host of the original series, Andrew Porter, is there with us. And as I mentioned in the first rebooted episode of this series, he is currently on a mission to Mars and uh, is unavailable. But when he comes back, I'll be sure to have him on. If you enjoy today's episode, consider giving us a review on iTunes. It takes like 10 seconds, maybe? Maybe 15 seconds. I don't know. But, uh... A good review on iTunes, it really helps the show grow, and and it helps us attract guests to come on the show, it helps attract advertisers, and it just makes me feel good knowing that people like the show. So, if you could possibly spare the 15 to 20 seconds it would take just to write a, a short little review of the show on iTunes, I would greatly, greatly appreciate it. As always, you can check out badtimesgoodstoriespod.com for past episodes and merch, and email me at badtimesgoodstoriespodcast at gmail.com. Just a quick note on this episode. As I mentioned, it was the first ever episode, so uh, we're still kind of figuring out our recording techniques, so the audio isn't as strong as uh, the more recent episodes have been, but it's still certainly listenable, and I hope you enjoy it. And now, without further ado, here is my conversation with my cousin, Andy Beersack. Is that a good level? Oh, that's a great level. I can keep all of my conversation down to this <laughs> part of my <laughs> yeah, register. Just, just speak Saucy. ominously. Yeah. Uh, so I was in a hotel <laughs> and... Oh, smooth wow. jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Welcome to Bad Times, Good Stories. Yeah, see, you should have me do the intro. I've it? never broken any bones. Have you? Oh, I've I've broken my right hand maybe three or four times. Yeah, about three or four times. The same hand? Yeah, the same hand. Same right hand? I already have, yeah, the same right hand. <laughs> and actually, I got surgery on it the last time because I also tore like a ligament off of it. And they did like the whole x-ray CAT scan thing. And tore and, a ligament off of it? Yeah, off like, my the thumb. the ligament yeah. was gone. It was, it's... Tore off my thumb and then wrapped around like the bone of the thumb. Holy! So they had like reattach it with screws. And uh, when I went in to like figure out whether or not I needed surgery, the doctor sat down. He's like, "Well, first things first, um, you have arthritis." <laughs> and I was like, oh, "Oh, I had no idea. Great." He's like, "Yeah, you have early arthritis. It's only going to get worse. There's no treatment for that." And I was like, "Oh, thanks, thanks." First things first. Yeah, and then he goes, and and and, and he goes, secondly, uh, you you will need surgery too. I was like, oh, so. That's not going to help the arthritis at all, is it? He's like, no, it's going to make it worse. I'm like, great. 
Thank you. <laughs> so wow. that was like the last time I broke it. But the other times were all just uh, growing up, doing stupid shit, going off of like zip lines wrong, playing field hockey <laughs> in like high school PE. I only ever had injuries as a kid yeah. from sports. So like I had like right. I played hockey as a kid. So I oh had, that'll definitely do it. Yeah, uh, hurt my tailbone when I was real little. Like I was like thirteen. That's so and painful. the worst part of hurting your tailbone when you're a kid is like the reality as an adult. If you hurt your tailbone, is that you realize eventually it'll get better, but there is no immediate fix. No. And so when a doctor tells a young child, there's no way to help you with this. Uh, it's so yeah. ominous and scary. Yeah. So I had a, a broke butt, so to speak. And uh, it's also hard to talk about with your friends because they can't really explain. Like, well, my butt, I broke my butt. Like, I hurt my butt. <laughs> my ass is broken. Um, I didn't break it, though, thankfully. Uh, was it was just, ask. you know, a severe injury on the butt. Um, and then I, th- I had like, you know, I, I broke my tooth. This is a fake tooth. Oh, I'm really? pointing to my right tooth right now to the listener. Uh, that's a fake tooth. Jesus. Um, what happened there? That I got from uh, I was trying to learn how to swim um and i uh coincidentally i still have never learned uh yeah. i you know traumatic experience and never went back in the water um i was trying to learn how to swim at this local public park and the cincinnati the west side of cincinnati in the early 90s had uh, uh, just it's it's peak of local public parks that were uh, trying to have programs happen for people who had like basically kids of parents who had to work full time. Yeah, yeah. So there was no shortage for some reason everywhere. There was like a boom in daycare services. And my parents both worked full time, so I went to all of them, whether it was the YMCA or the city commission yeah, yeah. or whatever it was. I would bounce all around. So one of them was uh, a daycare that was in a, a local public uh, pool and park area where – they have since destroyed the park because the slides were made of metal and the city got sued because so many people had burned skin off of their yeah, legs yeah. Um, from the sunlight. <laughs> um, uh, the other thing that happened there was uh, our uncle Mike, I, uh, Joe, I, I, we were, it was coach pitch baseball and I hit him in the balls. <laughs> <laughs> he, threw it, he threw it at me like an underhanded lob. And you know, my dad, I grew up to, to hit as hard as you can. And so I did. And I, yeah. you know, I, I, I injured our uncle's testicles uh, in that park. But in that park, I, I got in the water and tried to swim from one end to the other. And I came up for air just as I was on the, the, uh, oh, the other side Jesus. and just smacked, just crashed my teeth out. So I had to go into emergent surgery. Um, and uh, I still I still go to the same dentist because I don't have a dentist in Los Angeles. <laughs> I've lived I. in L.A. for no, like eight yeah. years. It's, yeah, and it's I always I that. only visit the dentist when I go home. Yep. Yep. Me too. Same here. Yep. Yeah. That's why it's so fun. When I think of home, I have such wonderful thoughts. I'm like, oh, I'm going home. I can go to the dentist. Sure. My mom yeah. always tries to schedule that stuff. Yeah. Oh, you're yep. going to yeah, be yeah. home. Let's, you know, we'll Let's go to the DMV or yeah. something. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> the worst things possible yeah. that you can do at home. <laughs> <laughs> the adult chores. Back. But you had one epic fail. Right? Uh, well, you know, I, you, you're going to have failure when you try to do the impossible. <laughs> and the way I look at my my injury that we're going to discuss today is, and it was an attempt to fly um, oh, good. by a human being <laughs> who was at the very least uh, making poor decisions at the time. Um, I, I, people would like to think that, you know, and we'll obviously get into what this is, but people would like to think that I was like drunk out of my mind at the time. <laughs> I, I wish uh, I could blame that. I, yeah, I was not, that'd be a good uh, excuse if you had I, it. You know, I think I had had a few drinks, but it certainly wasn't a situation where this would have been, you know, merited. I should have done better with my brain and my arms and all the other things that made me do this. Uh, so I don't know if you want to elaborate or should I just start from the beginning of where this yeah. was? Yeah. Uh, it was 2011. Um, Black Veil Brides, my band, uh, had just finished our first major label record. Um, it was our first record with Universal, and the band was starting to get some hype going. Uh, but yeah, it hadn't been released yet. Hadn't right? been released no. yet. The band was starting to get some hype going, and the retail store Hot Topic had kind of really taken a shine for us and really wanted us to be involved in the store. And so, um, we were doing like daily signings in the weeks leading up to uh, the the release. And then when we went on tour, uh, on that tour for the release, we did signings almost every day in every store. And so mm. we were constantly in these stores. And, um, it was the day before the day of release. Uh, we had an opportunity where like Fuse was going to follow us and it was going to be this whole day in the life piece. And we were starting in, um, I want to say, like West Covina or something. Um, and then we were going to backtrack and sign at all these Los Angeles based hot topics. Um, and it would culminate in the hot topic at Hollywood and Highland mall, 
which we would then play a live show on Hollywood Boulevard, open to the public, oh, okay. big thing. So, you know, at the time, I'm 19 or something. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm incredibly excited about yeah. what's yeah. going on. You know, there's, there's a great deal of, like, kind of, this is a cool thing. I've never gotten to, you know, I'm, you grew up looking at these things where there's like, oh, a day in the life piece or, um, you know, playing this big outdoor thing. You know, you think of, like, Bono on the roof and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for me, it was Lots like... Lots of momentum. This, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It, was, yeah. it was an exciting thing. Um, so I got all amped up. So we're signing all day and we're exhausted. And then, you know, we finally get to... Uh, the Hollywood and Highland signing, and this is mid afternoon. Um, and not to say that it's like takes so much out of us to sign autographs, but you're certainly you're at the time we were wearing full like makeup and you know crazy hair and these costumes that are not comfortable. Like the we would wear black body paint, and many of the bands that now wear black body paint uh, in the aftermath of Black Veil Brides, mm. they wear like uh, actual makeup that's made for that. Okay, when we started doing it, we didn't have access to that or didn't know that that was what you should use, and we were using yeah. actual acrylic paint. Oh wow! Well. That you don't put on your skin because chiefly because it can cause all of your pores to be closed and Completely. therefore you can't breathe. And so we would cover ourselves head to toe in this acrylic paint. So by six or seven in the afternoon, the feeling of just like overwhelming like exhaustion. Did you get like claustrophobic at all? Because you, you, like like... you would just feel very down. And then yeah, the yeah. stuff we'd wear on our face was this thick grease paint. So your okay. eye, like everything's just feeling kind of droopy. Mm-hmm. So we would at the time we didn't like to do any kind of press out of that look because that was kind of the aesthetic yeah. that we were presenting for the band. Um, now I couldn't imagine doing that. I mean, but at the time, you know, it was very important. Uh, and so when you're looking at the fact that on that particular day, we got in our war paint and our stage gear at like, you know, 9 a.m., that's a much longer hole to be in that. Yeah. It's a hell of a nine to five. Yeah, yeah. That, then, then, you know, God. to be in, in traffic and through Los Angeles and everything. So we're all pretty exhausted. So I think that the plan was, you know, we'll have some cocktails. We'll do these signings. We'll, you know, try to yeah. get the amp back up. Nothing too crazy. Um and I just started getting like this fight or flight thing kicked in. Like, okay, you can't be tired. You gotta, yeah, you gotta be awesome. This is like, the big, this is a show, big yeah. thing, you know. For me at the time, like I said, this is a huge deal. And you know, we're an LA band. You know, we all came from different places and came out here and to be in on Hollywood Boulevard and kind of the the, the dream factory, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's a big deal. It's it's symbolic in many ways of like you know most people don't get to have that or most people don't have the I made it moment. But to be in Hollywood was a big deal. Um, I thought when I go out there, I'm going to give like 110%. The show is going to be incredible. I'm going to do everything I possibly can because not only are we playing for a you know a massive amount of our fans, but yeah. we're also playing for people who are just on Hollywood yeah. or interested in what is this show. So I got to do something impressive. Now, um, you guys know because you've been to the Hollywood and Highland Mall, those yes. elephants uh, yeah. that are up. For the listener, uh, this is an outdoor mall. Um, there are giants. Uh, marble statues that overlook the mall. Uh, imagine like a garden on the inside, and then there's pillars that go up and up and up. Um, I spotted those right when we walked the stage, and I was like, yeah. that's it. Yeah. I'm going to climb up there. Now, I'd like to think that I'm a smarter person yeah. than to think that I have that dumb of thoughts running through my head. But not only did I have that dumb thought, but then I processed it like, yep, that's going to happen. And I will, <laughs> I, I, I guess I could blame the circumstance, but the, the reality is that it wasn't, it wasn't smart. And so we did start you tell pl- anybody this. No, no. Uh, we start putting, no, God, no, because I, I don't, I don't share those kind of, it's supposed to be a surprise, right? Yeah, it's yeah. going to be a wonderful surprise when Andy yeah. performs a magic trick and climbs up to the sky. Right. Uh, <laughs> Not even your band members or anything? No. You want to be surprised to, to be clear, um, and to go back on the, on the outfits, at the time I'm wearing uh, cowboy boots, vintage cowboy boots that have Jesus. no traction on yeah. the bottom. They are basically like dancer shoes. They're <laughs> slick. If anything, I can, like, I can slide... Tom Cruise style from one side of the room to the other uh, easily. Yeah. There's no way that I should be climbing on marble with these shoes. <laughs> um, marble, by the way, again, for the listener, very slick substance. Yeah. Uh, in case you're unfamiliar. Uh, for the layman, not something you want to climb on. We attract lots of laymen, so thank sure, you. Yeah, not, yeah, thank it, you. you know, it's not a hiker's uh, stone. It's not, <laughs> it's not what it's you might not, call a hiker's stone. Yeah. Um, so I... Uh, it's the I believe it's the second song, and I'm like, here we go. It might I was about to ask, song. yeah, how so first you, you go right off the bat. I'm going to be climbing this. Like, yeah, here we go. The show. Uh, okay. show starts. Start. The, I think it's the. It might be the first song. It, wow. I know it's midway through. I've been singing on stage for some time. Okay. Um, and I see it, and I go, all right. Here's my way up, and I look, and, and to my left, there's uh, 
a stack of pillars that lead up, you know, and it looks feasible that, okay, if I can get up the four feet to the first one, then I can get up the four feet to the next one. Yeah, I yeah. can just sort of jump and skip. Like Mario. But, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> what I'm not seeing up. from where I'm yeah. at is that once you reach that one plateau, there's like a 40 foot <laughs> differential between <laughs> like that I'd have to yeah. jump. Um, yeah, like Mario you know? again. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. There's, there's a massive jump separating yeah. these things. So I, uh, I go up, hop one, hop two, feel, find out that that is the end, uh, but make it to a third, you okay. know, d- just barely. And then I, and then there's the drop. So now I'm going, okay, well, this is over. Um, the problem is that to clear the first hurdle, I don't know how I did it because there was an eight foot separation between the first four foot jump and the stage itself. God. So there's longer than I am tall for me to get back to the stage. And now I have to jump down, down, and then somehow jump up and over. Because when you're climbing up, you're just going up, 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 yeah, up. Yeah, and right. your momentum will carry you forward. You're not thinking about the fact that you're not going to be able to clear back and over because you're leading with your legs at that point, yeah. which would just make you fall backwards. So I'm singing, I'm singing. I start to slip. I'm like, okay. Oh, God. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to get a plan. So I'm still singing and I sit down. This is super impressive now, by the way, yeah. for the audience. Yeah, you're I, uh, <laughs> I had a picnic basket. Yeah. And I that up. Let's again, let's, yeah. let's go over that the plan here was to do something so impressive yeah, yeah, that people yeah. couldn't believe it. Badass. What I've now done is jump two blocks up <laughs> and then turn around and then sit down yeah. in contemplation. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what, what are your band members doing? Are they looking to They're you? They're playing on the stage. Yeah, they yeah. can't even see me because there's I a was separation. Wondering, yeah, if they so can they're, even... I mean, there's no one in my band that's eight feet tall, so they can't <laughs> see. They don't that's know. That's a shame. They yeah. just go, oh, Andy's doing his thing. Because, you yeah. know, when we would play club shows, I would go climb on speaker stacks mm-hmm. or whatever. So they just think, oh, Andy's doing what he does. Uh, and so they're still playing. I'm still singing. Um, I sit down. And I put my hands with my palms open on either side of me, you know, like to sort of push up. Mm-hmm. Um, and in my mind, for some reason, I had a huge lapse in judgment in this moment, which is you're super strong in your upper arm region. Like that's what entered my yeah, head, yeah. which for the listener, I am not. Um, <laughs> you're looking at both of me. I am not a behemoth man. I'm certainly not a man that can push with only my wrists, my entire <laughs> six foot two body, eight feet through the air and then land on my feet. So I, here we go. One, two, three. And I push with my wrists and then just fly like a rag doll oh. down, dink, dink. And then the final blow is all the way down to the other side. So I fall, and I'm <sighs> at this point now. I'm straight up and down, and I'm falling sideways, and I'm starting to turn more and more. Yeah. I smack my ribs dead on to the edge, the very corner, like the sharp corner of one of these things that I've jumped onto, marble thing I jumped yeah. onto, and then I smack down, and then hit my head and, and other side of my body on the ground. Immediately, the wind's knocked out of me. But I'm conscious. You know, I, I come back. Uh, okay. I come back. Maybe it's like a second or two of kind of, you know, where am I kind of thing. But I'm, I'm back. Um, I'm in seething pain that is only made worse by the security who runs up to me and starts performing the Heimlich maneuver and CPR on me. <laughs> oh. Are you still singing? No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> yeah. the, band, the band is still playing. Yeah, because yeah. they can't because see Because they you, can't right? see yeah. me. So, dink, dink, poof. And then the guy runs up and is now the, a person who has just shattered his ribs. Jesus. Is having them pressed in. And Christ. I can hear them crunch because the guy is pressing them into my body and going, huh, 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 and doing the blowing in my mouth. And I can't talk because the wind's knocked out of me. So I've tried to fucking stop. And he doesn't. And then eventually uh. I, please stop screaming at him. Uh... And then I, I, I get this second win. They, they push me up, and all of a sudden, this like adrenaline hits me, and I'm gone. Mentally, I'm gone. Yeah, yeah. What I'm now describing to you is something that I've only seen in videos, <laughs> which is I got back on the stage. Yeah. I performed the rest of the show. Good Lord. Songs that we had never played before. Um, because I didn't know where I was, so I just started calling out the names of songs that we did not know, uh, and the oh, band was Jesus. very confused. They didn't see what happened, so suddenly... <laughs> so you go up, yeah. and then I you went on a spirit quest, and apparently it came another band. That's... Yeah, I come back and just change the whole set list with songs that we don't know, Jeez. and I'm very aggressive. Like, I watch videos, and I'm very mad at people for some. I'm going, hey, 
you just went normal. Sing the damn song. Yeah, yeah. Like screaming just, at the yeah, audience. All this adrenaline. This yeah. like lizard brain is just angry, like aggressive insanity. Yeah. Um, we finish the show, and I come back to a few minutes later, pass out. I wake up, and I have Ooh. a uh, security guard who works at the mall. Who, um, I this might come as a shock for you, but did not have medical training. Uh, oh, okay. the mall security guy <laughs> did not have medical training. Strange. He Strange. is. You know, like when you pull, pull into a garage and there's a pole in the middle, mm-hmm. and so sometimes the the homeowner will wrap something around that pole so that the doors don't like open. Like styrofoam, styrofoam or something. Yeah. Yeah. He was able to acquire some of that from the parking garage at Hollywood and Highland and wrapped me rug style with <laughs> this styrofoam <laughs> because he believed that if I moved, then my ribs would break more. So I am from... <laughs> Right underneath my arms, all the way in down a, to my kneecaps. Just in a tube. In a tube of, <laughs> and then taped <laughs> shut. Yeah. Did they give you to FedEx afterwards? Or did they yeah. ship you so to the... now, now yeah. I'm, I, my band doesn't quite know what to make of it. Yeah. Uh, most of the guys in the band are, are very apologetic. I think, you know, my bass player just left. Yeah, there wasn't any kind of like, uh, people just didn't know what to do. You know what I mean? There was, there was really no uh, understanding of what had occurred because, yeah. like, you know, to anybody in my band's credit, they didn't know that right. I had, they never saw what happened happened right so you know uh cc i think was was left i mean i think that they knew or started to find out you know i think jinx kind of could tell something was wrong or whatever but nobody in the band knew so there wasn't none of them were like oh let's go to the hospital because they didn't know what was going yeah, on because yeah. i was immediately taken and Fuck. you know just put into this like wrapped up thing <laughs> so i uh <laughs> but you blacked out and that's what you woke up to is that what you said um no so i I blacked out and woke up to that. Okay, yeah. and then and what I have is now my friend Matt, uh, good, and my friend Jeffrey. Um, now anybody who's not familiar with Jeffrey, Jeffrey is uh, very tall. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I I don't I, I don't think he's a, a cross or he's not transgender, but he, he dresses in women's clothing mm-hmm. and makeup and um, you know kind of a very imposing figure. He's a very interesting and and you know kind of cool looking guy. Um, but he's he's a very specific looking guy. You know, he's got sure. bright pink hair and these you know big lips and big makeup and women's yeah. clothing and high heels and everything. And uh, so that's the only two people that I see are my friend Matt, and my friend Jeffrey. And so uh, I'm then taken away by our manager's assistant to go to uh, the uh, Kaiser Permanente Hospital on yeah. Sunset, which is the nearest hospital that he could figure out or whatever. Um, if you've ever been. To that hospital, you know that on the opposite side of the street is the children's yes, hospital. Yeah. So um, he did not know that. So I am taking again. I want to reiterate uh, <laughs> that I am wearing yeah. full like g- goth dead guy makeup. I am wrapped up in an inner tube with crazy hair, and I'm screaming bloody murder in a wheelchair. <laughs> oh. In a wheelchair. In a wheelchair, covered in black paint. Jesus. And I am wheeled into the emergency room of a children's hospital um, <laughs> oh, first. Oh, God. They had to think you were on drugs or something. Yeah. Absolutely. They yeah. must have. And I'm screaming at him, this is not the right place. So <laughs> <laughs> This is not where this we're supposed to This is not the Denny's. Yeah. This, this is, is not, not the, We're not supposed to be here. balloons on the walls. You're yeah. just like, this well, is not. You know what tipped <laughs> it off for me was the giant, like, Lego statue yes. outside and, like, the <laughs> building blocks that said ABC. The fact that it was, like, a rainbow-themed yeah. room. These are things that are not around for adult <laughs> hospitals. Generally, adult hospitals are more drab. They understand yeah. that there's not much levity going on no. in yeah, the injuries. Yeah. No. So uh, we go across the street. Now I'm wheeled across the street. Oh, oh, oh. Um, I'm so painful. Still in seething pain, <laughs> yeah. wrapped up in oh, this. Yeah. Feeling every bump. Uh, and and the, my, my manager's uh, assistant goes, look, I'm going to go park the car. Can you just stay in here? And I go, well, I mean, yeah, you don't need to be in here. i got to figure this out, whatever. You know, I'm in yeah, pain, yeah. but I'm starting to come to you. Now I'm in the hospital. I know something good is going to happen. I'm going to get seen. Um, well, the only person that comes in immediately during this time period mm-hmm. is my friend Jeffrey, who again – is a very tall, um, feminine man who's mm-hmm. wearing like electric pink makeup, hair, and I am a man wearing red lipstick and eyeshadow and mascara and a big crazy hair, and I'm wearing women's leggings with yeah. like, uh, <laughs> like a, they like kind of zip up on the side. Okay, it's yeah. out of context. <laughs> yeah, here's the thing I've always said. <laughs> <laughs> what is rock and roll on stage is without question a male prostitute 
off of stage. <laughs> and I discovered this, a little sidebar here. I discovered this uh, when Ashley, my bass player, and I were walking around in uh, Copenhagen one time. And we realized that our cool leather jacket, black hair, mascara yeah. thing was not being perceived as rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> However, it was very uh, enticing to the local businessmen. Yeah. Uh, so again, I uh, now we're in the hospital, and I'm I'm dressed in this what you might perceive as exciting outfit. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And that's Certainly something that eccentric. is eccentric. Eccentric. Yeah. Um, and the only other person with me is now what you can easily assume if you are the nurse at the hospital is my. Significant other. Yeah. <laughs> my friend Jeffrey. So the only person that is allowed to go in triage with me <laughs> is Jeffrey. So it's me and my buddy Jeffrey, who to his credit is doing such an awesome job yeah. at screaming at everyone and calling them bitches and telling them that they need to help me. Which, to be fair, it might sound too aggressive, but if you've ever been in one of those hospitals, it's, you kind of have to you you, have you somebody have there. To. Yeah. So he's yeah. doing a great job and they just assume that we're a couple. Um, they also assume that I am on a significant amount of illegal drugs yes. due yeah. to how I look, yeah. what I'm wrapped up in. The fact that you're probably still dazed, I'm guessing. Covered still, in paint. Yeah. And they can't, because of the paint, they can't find my veins to do the drug test. So I am laying <laughs> in a bed with my arms out, getting stabbed over and over and over again, all over my arm. And the woman's going, I'm so sorry, I can't find it. And I go, wash it off. She goes, yeah, I, I was thought it was say. a tattoo. I was like, it's coming off on your hand. What yeah. kind of tattoo did you imagine that I have that is coming off onto your hand? I, I finally get into the room, and <laughs> the doctor comes in and explains to me that I have broken ribs, uh, to which I replied, duh. Yeah. Uh, thank you for making me wait for two hours for that. Uh, but she also explains that I have not only broken my ribs, but my 9, 10, 11 rib are broken. My 11th rib is shattered into like shrapnel pieces of bone. Jesus. And then the process by which I pass that is explained to me, which involves over the next course of a few weeks, a series of hot water enemas that can be administered, as she said, by any of your loved ones. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, immediately I'm thinking, who's my best bet to shove a bottle up my ass? Yeah, uh, probably mom if she gets out here. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know that I'm cool with dad doing that. Um, certainly not. You know, I at the time my my girlfriend or my ex girlfriend at the time and I were kind of in a rocky place. Mm -hmm. We weren't really dating uh, at the time, and it was it, and that is the next part of the story. Um, oh. So I, I was thinking, who could do it? Yeah. So I go to sleep, and uh, my mom is there when I wake up. You know, I wake up and, and she's there. She flew out red eye. And, Jesus. But more importantly, Did you call her? someone called her. I yeah. think Richard called her or somebody. Because okay. my, my tour manager, my band, everybody was out in the waiting room. They wouldn't let any of them in because they believed that my significant other was already in there. And so why would you need more family? <laughs> yeah, His yeah, boyfriend yeah. is in there. and they Because well, uh, they also look crazy. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they all help. look crazy. So uh, they won't let him in. And so Jeffrey stays with me for a little bit. And then my mom gets there and I wake up and my ex-girlfriend is there. And you have to understand that I am heavily sedated. Yeah, yeah. And while I was asleep, the conversation had been had amongst my mother and ex-girlfriend that we are back together, that everything's fine, that everything's good. And then she proceeds to do an excellent job taking care of me. So I am now, not only have I broken my ribs, but I have now gotten back into a relationship <laughs> during my coma. Um, uh, and so, but I can't, I don't have the heart to be like, no, because I would look like a total ass because yeah. she's there to help yeah. me. But it was a, it was a, a incredible move on her part. Seriously. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, and certainly one that uh, I... You know, I think I, at this point we we've, we've been broken up for many years. I have I have nothing against her. In fact, I think I you know we we were probably too young to really be in a relationship in the first place. So um, we were making a lot of odd decisions against one another constantly. Uh, and so at the time she was being really sweet. So there was no real reason to be like I'm not going to be an ass and kick her out. So now my mom's there. She's there. Uh, my friend Matt's there. Jeffrey's there, and they're they're telling us you know I'm going to have to be here for a while. So they transfer us to. Uh, a hotel in uh where were we north, north hollywood. hollywood yeah because they wanted a hotel yeah they wanted me to get out of they wanted me to start getting up and trying to walk around because i was supposed to be on by the way my record came out that day <laughs> i was supposed to yeah, be on tour backdrop. yeah my record is out i i don't get to hear anything about it or sales Jesus figures or, and i'm supposed to be on tour like the following week 
Um, Warp tour, right? Yeah. 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 Or t- three days or something. Yeah. Yeah. So I go to a hotel and my entire crew comes. Yeah. And uh, I am sitting there and all of a sudden our assistant at the time gets very violently angry with me and leaves the room and they say, oh, uh, don't worry about them. They accidentally did meth last night. So they're freaking out. <laughs> That's just a sidebar, by the way. That's, oh, and I will man. never know how that person accidentally did meth. Yeah. Um, but they were very upset. Yeah, understandably. For yeah. just a minute. Uh, yeah. They didn't work for us for too long. Nice person. But yeah. I, I mean, when you accidentally do meth, you might get a little angry. Yeah. yeah. Apparently, yeah. they've been up for several days. Um, <laughs> so I, uh, I'm laying in this bed, and I'm realizing that I'm not going to be able to go on the first week of warp Tour. And they, the, the doctors are saying I shouldn't go on multiple weeks of warp Tour. Yeah. The pain is so great that I can't function. Like, it's yeah, horrendous. Yeah. I mean, I can't move. The only way that I can feel better is by taking this, like, dose of Dilaudid that is so strong that it's basically, like, the equivalent of, like, nearing, like, a heroin overdose. Yeah. And they won't give it to me. They have to administer it at the hospital. So I have to go to the hospital. So you have to leave the hotel, go get that, and then come back. And then the come back. For, like, several days, I'm doing that. And... When they do it, I'm out. You know, I'm completely uh-huh. gone. And it's nice because I'm not in this pain. But I don't I, – I'm a person that, like, I'm not a drug user because I don't like the feeling of being out of control. Um, so it wasn't – I hated, like, pain pills. And I hated not being They're in control. Shit, and I hated the fact that my band pain. was counting on me to be on this tour and I couldn't be there. Uh, so they then transfer us again to another hotel in West Hollywood. And the idea is that this place is more of a rehab center. I can really recuperate there. Um and now my mom's there, my friend Matt's there, my ex-girlfriend's there, Jeffrey's there, and now Joe enters the picture. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Which is a blast from the past. Yeah. Because we haven't like seen each other in a while. Yeah. This is like <laughs> recently after Joe had moved to Los Angeles. Yeah, so yeah. We hadn't seen each other in quite a while. But now I'm in a bed. So why not come hang out? Yeah. Like, you know, yeah, I, mean, yeah, yeah. I just gotten off a show and I was just, and I, yeah, I just had no idea what this world was. I walked into a crazy world. <laughs> it was certainly... When you consider that it was a budding rock star who is laying in a bed completely broken, having an enemas administered to him multiple times God. a day, his ex girlfriend, <laughs> his friend, a seven foot tall cross dresser, his cousin, and his <laughs> mother are all in this tiny hotel room all day long Jesus. every day. And then people would bring me things. Like my buddy Richard brought me movies to watch uh, to, so while I was la- out of, while I was laying down. And out of the kindness of his heart, he brought me two films that everyone who's injured wants to watch: um, the non-subtitled version of *The Passion of the Christ*. Yep. And the smash debut of Tom Cruise, the movie *Legend* <laughs> with Tim Curry. Serious *Legend*. As the Devil. Yep. Um, what was the band that should have done the soundtrack to Legend that we learned about? By the Oingo, way, we watched Oingo. all the special features. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh, I'm awesome. sure. Yeah. Uh, Oingo Boingo. I believe. Oh, I believe so. Oingo yeah, they would have made it. Gonna... Yeah. They would have made the movie ten times better. It was all, very interesting. All the bonus Little sidebar features. here. All the bonus features talk about how the movie only failed because the soundtrack was wrong, and if only they had gotten to do the Oingo Boingo soundtrack. That's what they did. Ten times better. Like all the actors, like Curry. everyone is talking about it. Like that was the downfall. The director's it's commentary so is one of those. Weird. It's like uh, a Joel Schumacher style apology commentary. Yeah, yeah. But it's only for the sound. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Look, this song. It should have been the Danny Elfman song. Look, I'm so sorry. And then like silence. <sighs> See, there's another example. There's another this one. song would have been that song. Q just didn't do it. So we're watching this and. You know, this goes on for a long time. Like, and it was like two weeks. Yeah, it was like two yeah. weeks. I think okay. Freeway was also a movie we watched. Freeway. Uh, Reese Witherspoon, I think. Reese Witherspoon <laughs> affecting <laughs> one of the worst uh, Southern accents. <laughs> on par with Norm MacDonald's uh, KFC, KFC commercial. commercial. Oh, those are yeah. bad. Yeah. Those yeah. Are really so bad. if you imagine an actress yeah. of acclaim doing that accent for 90 minutes, you can pretty much figure <laughs> out what Freeway is. Which is meant to be a, as it was described to us by our friend Richard, a modern day uh, Little Red Riding Hood. Yeah. What it is, is uh, a girl dressed in a TLC costume from the South, uh, played by Reese Witherspoon, uh, drives a car away from her terrible life, okay. and then a crazy, who is it? It's, oh, uh, it's what? oh God. What's who his name? It? From um, 24. Yeah. Keith uh, or Sutherland? Keith or Sutherland. Yeah. He's an insane man who man. hijacks the car. And does he win in the end? I feel I like he wins. I think he does. <laughs> he, like she, he keeps coming. She shoots him in the head. He comes back. Like 
It's amazing. I would go watch it. Yeah. 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 I think we should. <laughs> so uh, what's upsetting at this point is that my band is now out on tour, but all they can do is just they're, they're, sign, they're doing signings every day. I was about to ask. Yeah, what exactly? Yeah. So there's nothing to really do. And then I just decided one day that it, was, it had been too long uh, of me being in this room and having nothing to do. By the way, the other thing is that I couldn't defecate. Mm -hmm. because of the severe pain so i developed this insane like belly where if you've ever not pooped for two weeks um it is crazy looking yeah so that was and i'm like all right time to go on tour so i had (laughs) this big belly and i would wrap myself up in these uh bandages ace bandages to keep the ribs in place and i did the whole tour uh that way good god did they when you hit your head was it also just did they say this is a concussion this is all that stuff beyond they never mentioned that. Really? You, no one ever looked into it. By the way, my doctor was terrible. Uh, worst bedside manner I've ever experienced. Really? She treated you with the contempt of, <laughs> like, someone who you just cut off in traffic. Like, that level of, like, oh. Was it because of your attire? Do you think she just was judging you? Or was she I, just like that? Was I everybody? have no idea. But when I came, <laughs> even when I came back to, like, get a checkup later, yeah. she was still very. Why are you wasting yeah, my time type yeah, of thing? I've got other people. <laughs> You're fine. How long was the tour then that you were doing? How many shows do you think that you did like that? It was like two months after that. Good God. Yeah. Could and, you f- and what's great is that actually I wound up meeting um, on that tour. I wound up meeting Juliet, who oh, I've been okay. with for, for five years. And so a great thing came out of that. She yeah. helped me dress my wounds every day. And, uh, you know, and, and I will, again, I'll say to my ex-girlfriend's credit, she was very nice to me uh, in that in that time that we were together. Um, I did send a notification text after I had left. Like, just again, I want to reiterate, we're really not. We're actually broken up. Like, that's... I just want to make sure that we're both aware of that. And I don't know if that was totally clear. I don't know. But it was was certainly something. Because, again, like, with, with that, with anything, where you're, like, you're in a relationship or you're not... If something traumatic happens, nice people will help you. Yeah. So that's that's what I chalk it up to. She was a good person and and helped me out. And uh, the, the whole thing, I mean, the same thing goes for... Uh, my buddy Matt Good was there to help me out. Jeffrey went above and beyond and helped me out. Stayed Sounds there every like day, it. Yeah. Helped us out. You know, got us pizzas and all kinds of stuff. And uh, yeah, I was really fortunate that in a crazy experience, everybody was super great. My band guys all sending nice texts and and you know tweets and mm-hmm. you know. I mean, I know like for instance, you know, we've all had injuries. My my bass player <laughs> Ashley, he fell and broke his his nose. Uh, fell out of a, of a bus in a parking lot. Tripped on the on the steps and fell out. So we've all had injuries. Uh, Jake. Broke his ribs at one point, um, but you know the guys always band together, and we're all friends, so we're close. But yeah, that was that was the experience of the ribs. When you showed up in the, in the to the hospital in the tube, how long were you in the tube before they're like, okay, get out of they this? They cut stuff out the home? tube pretty quickly. That's good. Okay, yeah. okay. Right. I wasn't like laying in the bed in like triage. With the tube. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering yeah, if you're in the how long you're in the. The thing that made that. me laugh was just seeing it, just being on the road and doing everything you were. For a couple of years now on your own, just seeing you having to like be babied by your mother, yeah, was just really because it's this thing where again you're appreciative that they're there, but it just has to be such a culture shock almost. I'm not culture shock. About the weirdest thing was like, what did the fucking room service people think was going on? Oh yeah. Like, yeah, what is? Why are there all these very different? It's like the UN in this room. Yeah, and yeah. the guy in the bed. Is like, <laughs> the most fucked up, up UN. Like, no. was laying in the bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Signing, but signing for all the room service. Like, the <laughs> room service guy walks in and everybody just points at the dead guy. <laughs> no, it's him. <laughs> it's him. It's him. It's him. Yeah, yeah the, it, it, the craziest thing was just the 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 negative nature of all of that. And then also, like, the pot, like the album debuted. It was really exciting. It came out. Like, what, what did it debut at? Uh, that was our first, I think it was our first uh, top, top 20, 20 record. Yeah. yeah, it was like number 17 or something. And then that... Yeah. You know, ever since we've gotten bigger, but that was the the first moment of yeah. like, oh, this band's gonna like have some legs. So, but the moment of like celebration, I got I think yeah, was, like, I got the call from our attorney about the record sales, and I was just in bed like yeah. eating pretzels, can't get up. I think yeah. we like high fived, and then you tried to take a shit, yeah, and, and couldn't, couldn't. Oh. Well, <laughs> that was the celebration. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you what though, the one the one interesting thing about the ribs is that I can always tell when it's about to rain. Yeah, so that is. You That's know. I got the same thing with my hands. Yeah, yeah. like when big weather changes, I'm go up. Uh, my thumb hurts. So yep. It's gonna rain soon. Yeah. yeah, I like to think think that this is a cautionary tale for idiots. Yeah. Um, what did the, what did the the audience do? Do you know really what they did? What the reaction was when you? 
Well, some people just made animated gifs of my fall. Oh, fun! Uh, it's all videoed. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, yeah. there's some pretty brutal uh, imagery. <laughs> <laughs> I have the gif. I'll actually I send it fairly often to people um, because yeah. I find it to be hilarious. Yeah. like the sort of me falling like a rag doll because I had super yeah. long hair at the time too, mm-hmm. so my hair is like yeah. falling like this, and then you know from right to left, it's it's a it's an interesting Jesus. visual. Yeah, you just kind of flail backwards. Oof. Yeah, it's rough. But I'll tell you what, nothing get me down today. Uh, as I remember, we have to mention while we're here that while we're taping this or filming this or, or audio recording this, yeah. is just after the Bengals are now 3-0. and Yes. Head of the AFC North. It's and, a beautiful uh, day for that. It's a beautiful day. So nothing about my ribs can get me down right now. That's good. No. That's a plus. Yeah. I'm, I'm surprised you haven't broken anything, Joe. That's really you've never broken anything. That's no. insane to me. I mean, because I've seen you fall the fl- so many times. No, it's, look, <laughs> that, it's the Flanders ankles. They don't it, allow it, to get up to a speed mean. where you could. Yeah, yeah. Hurt we, we try and hike, and then you just would. You'd be way back, and like, what's going on? He's like these damn ankles. And I'm like, how have you not <laughs> fallen have off the cliff? The I have to look at the ground. <laughs> That's what you were doing. I never appreciate anything when no, I'm hiking really because I'm just staring at the ground. Should you explain the Flanders ankles? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think it's been mentioned. I don't know that it has. No, it's a long storied history. I mean, there was one Thanksgiving. Um, on the Flanders side of, of the family, there was probably 14 of us at a house for Thanksgiving, and 10 of us tripped on the same piece of carpet. <laughs> um, and it's just, it does, it, it, you can just be walking down the street and you just trip and you fall and you have no idea why. And it, it, it literally, everybody in the family. Do, are, from are doctors baffled by it? Have yeah. they said? Oh yeah, yeah. It, we're we've written several encyclopedias. <laughs> uh, it's referred to as Flanders ankles, uh, mysterious trip and fall. That's so strange. Uh, yeah, it's it's one of many curses I've been blessed with. That's just sure, uh, but still, that's so I, can, I mean, my know. mom is a, is a you know an original Flanders. And, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, it's it, she she trips here and there. Mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's rough. So the other the, thing is that for a family that enjoys sports so much, that is not a family that has excelled in sports. <laughs> no. Uh, yeah. the, the one thing that I will say is that the Flanders side, probably the smartest and most like uh, wise assery in of all families <laughs> yeah. in America. Yes, possibly. in America, there is no so. more misanthropic, like <laughs> sarcastic <laughs> shitheads that get together. Uh. Than our family. It uh, dance around emotions better than anyone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta see that. Make sure you don't say how you really feel, but there's a lot of jokes going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're all here just because, you know, we kind of like each other, I guess. That's really, that's the attitude. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> helps. It's nice. It's, yeah, a broken, it's, like, a, it's like a warm hug. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's a broken bone in its own way. It's kind of getting yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the closest injury I had was not really my fault, but it, it falls into my luck. And that is that when I was 13, um, I had a uh, colonoscopy uh, because every 13-year-old has yeah. had many of those thanks right. to um, some wonderful medical history. But I went in for a colonoscopy. Not Flanders ankles, by the way. Yeah. No, not yeah. Flanders yeah. 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 Something wrong with your butt, I think. I yeah. But I went in and I came out and my, I couldn't move my left leg. Uh, it felt like a, a snake had wrapped, his, like, le- wrapped himself around my leg. And uh, I ended up, my fucking doctor pinched a nerve in my back that went down to my, that connected to my leg while getting a colonoscopy. I, said, how I don't know how. Was he? I don't know what was he. Yeah, he was pretty rough, I guess. But yeah, so then I couldn't walk uh, for like. I remember that. Yeah, I had yeah. to wear a brace, like a custom brace thing for like that three sucks. months. It was all summer. I had to go gump. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all the seats were taken. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, it was pure gump. And then that was the summer I decided to just send fan mail to uh, every random celebrity. Out of, I found a website that had... I also remember that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was, it was really... It, was, it would be like Casey Kasem. <laughs> <laughs> I remember uh, this as well. Yeah. Oh, Mel man. Brooks and Steve Martin and John McCain. I like, remember being over Bob Barker in know. Columbus yeah. at your house and you showing all the returns that you had gotten, like from yeah. the people who did write back. Or yeah. You got like a like a, a <laughs> autographed headshot or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, some a lot of them were preprints. Uh, uh, Eddie Murphy and Jim Jeff Goldblum. It was. It was really you used, silly. You used your time well, then, at least. <laughs> yeah. You your, Look, if you're yeah. going to sit around, get Jeff Goldblum's autograph. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I've always well. said. Yeah. 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 Worst lift by. I mean, I was growing up, I was constantly getting hurt where the point where, like, the hospital, I'd walk in and they'd say, oh, hey, Andrew. Like, they knew my name there. It got to that level. 
I was getting fish hooks stuck in my hands from fishing that they'd have to pull out. Fish hooks? Yeah, because I would go fishing. Like, fishing wasn't but for fun. I like that you just... qualified it with from fishing. As yeah, yeah. If, like, what <laughs> other circumstance yeah. would you know, I was fish hooks stuck in my hands? Yeah, I was into shit. <laughs> it was a third was grade into... English class. Yeah. <laughs> Arts and crafts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. show and tell in this one extreme. <laughs> Here's some fish hooks. <laughs> and for that <laughs> trick, the hospital. But yeah, I would do that. And I remember... One was I was playing in like elementary school at recess and me and my buddy Patrick were throwing a metal trash can lid to each other like a Frisbee. And I looked away because somebody called my name and then Patrick called my name and I looked back and there was just already the trash can lid in mid flight. It hit me in the head. I conked out real quick. I tried to open my eyes. I could only open one. The other one was just in searing pain. And uh, I remember the te- like the teacher came over and she said, "Let me see your eye." And I moved my hand from my eye and it had swollen and like filled with like blood and all that stuff, so it was all red. And I remember all the kids collectively just went ew. And the teacher goes, "Oh my god, cover your eye, cover your eye." <laughs> she rushed me into like the school nurse, and all they gave me was like a leaky bag of ice and like think like a tiny. I had scratched the lens of my eye, and at the same time I had broken. It was like two weeks earlier I had broken this hand. My right hand. So I had an eye patch and a broken hand <laughs> and like Jonathan Lip Nicky glasses, as I've explained in the past, which is so I just like this horrible, like, yeah, very. Did you break your hand also throwing trash can lids? No, was that, that was a, a common theme. That was a monkey bars thing. I was uh, <laughs> hanging upside down from the monkey bars. And we had tied a uh, jump rope around one of my legs, threw it over the monkey bars, and they pulled me up upside down. And then they like let go pulley? by mistake. Yeah, like a pulley. <laughs> and I landed on my hand wrong. So. I was just a fucking mess at like fourth grade. That's rough. Yeah. <laughs> you just get used to like, oh, this is life. <laughs> it's patch, pain. Yeah. I patch at a broken hand. <laughs> yeah. The only the school, oh, I guess I got two school injuries. For kindergarten, I uh, knocked myself out and got a concussion from God. headbutting another kid because I had seen that in the WWF and I thought that that was a way. <laughs> Did he wrong you or you just. Yeah, no, he, I, I was line leader and he got in front of me and I was, it was my week to be line leader and that was very important to me. Fuck. So his name was Adam Stirwald, and I grabbed him. <laughs> He's, dead now. Him. He's dead now. He's dead now. He took all remedial Fuck classes. <laughs> uh, I grabbed him by the shoulders, and I headbutted him as hard as I could, and I knocked us both out. Did you taunt him afterwards, or no? Oh, oh wait. Oh, you you were no, out, too. Be- here's the best thing. Like, his response, he took a year to come back and the way he got me back was by sticking both of my hands in his armpits which <laughs> smelled notoriously bad and he did it and he was who like, is yeah, this child dude? <laughs> he was like this is for a- this is for like headbutting me and he put him in and i i and just he closed his arms real tight yeah he closed him real tight i remember pulling him out and smelling him and started i almost started crying and i <laughs> This is, by the way, at one of my many day camps that I was at. Yeah. This one, by the way, was called, uh, what was it, Dunham? And it was in an old abandoned mental hospital from the 20s in the west side of Cincinnati that is now hell? just surrounded by the woods. Did they just which is, ice baths and saltines? What did yeah, they just... Dude, they just... It, was, it was empty, so it was just scary as all hell. Now it has been on these TV shows for, like, the most haunted places in America. Oh, That's shit. where I went every day during the summer. Sure. Um, you know. <laughs> With smelly pits. That's also yeah. a place where they had us go swimming in the city's reservoir because they didn't... There was no pools open. What? My parents what? pulled me from it after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And they... I was covered in sores and dirt. <laughs> <laughs> um, like a yeah, surf Adam, child. Adam Sturwald, little... Yeah, I, 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 speaking of dirt, my response was to shove my hands in dirt because I thought that would like neutralize the odor. <laughs> the smell. Back to uh, earth. Give them back yeah. to earth. <laughs> yeah. them be... Didn't do anything. Uh, and then the other Jesus. time I got injured in school was, uh, it was high school. And uh, I was, you know, I was like a freshman or something, and I was dating a girl. You know the way that you like date a girl in high school, where you right. like? N- no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't at all. Fair enough. I've seen it from afar. Yeah. But, what, well, they wrote me, wrote me postcards from the other side, but I never so, yeah. visited. Yeah. To be fair, it was it was it was uh, a fellow weirdo like myself okay, who yeah. was you know multicolored hair, braces, that kind of like thing, and she was very nice, but. Um, we would kind of just like walk next to each other in the hallway, kind of okay. thing. Like that yeah, was yeah, the yeah. level of like we're dating. That's is what, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then like I went over to her house one time. Like that was yeah, yeah. it with her parents there. That was the extent. Uh, and so I, uh, I mean, you know, but again, that was very early on in the dating pro. I didn't really know what the hell was going on. Yeah, uh, but I, she had previously dated this guy who was like a hulking 
bigger guy who actually also went to the insane asylum day camp and his his younger sister was my age but he was a guy who was always like that classic cartoon bully yeah. like the guy who uh his name was Torin McCartney Torin and McCartney he, <laughs> yeah the? and he's like <laughs> totally just like sneering face he talk like this kind of thing like he was that classic you know, and I hope, by the yeah, way, all yeah. these people that I've mentioned by name directly are yeah, listening yeah. to this show. <laughs> well, uh, I don't sound like that. Ooh. By the way, I haven't said Dang. anything really all that negative, except yeah. but all of these people have wronged me in some yeah, way. You so this, is, one. this is my retribution. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> listen up, Torin. He had previously dated that girl and uh, came up to me and started, you know, talking smack or whatever. And I said, you know, being me, I'd said some snarky thing back, not anticipating him to bust out his like parade float sized hand and <laughs> fucking punched me so hard that he got his knuckle he punched with his knuckle sticking out got his knuckle Jesus. into my eye and detached my retina uh oh and i flew back in the locker smacked my head and, and got a concussion now later in court uh because the school had you know the it was a city school so we had to go to court he really? claimed uh-huh. that the reason he was he had punched me was because he had asked if i wanted to be his friend and i said no and he just wanted to be my friend um so that, that still doesn't the, hold up in court. No, no. that's I, uh, the friend. I can, yeah. And guess what? Guess what? Friend, yeah. Guess what? The school went with him. They chose. Uh, well, uh, that's that's a whole different thing. But that is a long and storied history of Andy always uh, being the villain with the school. Uh, but the school chose to take his side and whatever. Jesus. But Jesus, that was the time that I got seriously injured in school. But I liked. I'll tell you what, because I am so dramatic. I loved the black eye. Oh, I sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, you rocked that shit. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to break my hand and arm for my whole life so I could wear a black cast because I thought it would be so badass it would look like a lineman's glove or something all the time. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The affectations of injuries, I'm totally into. The idea, yeah, Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. 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 I've thought about it because I've never had one. I was like, man. So there was a friend like in elementary school. He would do you break want me his to give you one? Year. I was say, live we do on that? Can we do that live on air? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was always jealous. I was like, man, I want to cast. Yeah. People to write their what name on it. And... I don't know. I don't know why that is. I mean, I remember my buddy in middle school got a broken hand, and he was the type of guy, he later went into the Marines, but he hated the cast to the point where he went into his dad's like garage, put his arm in a vice. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> he put his arm in a vice and then cut the cast off himself like two weeks early. And his parents were his parents like, whatever, fine. You're just going to cut it off again if we give you another. And his arm grew in all S shaped. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. yeah. it like a crazy straw. But no, he, yeah, he just grew back fine. He was like, oh, no, I don't care. I remember like, all what? the cool kids in when I went to Catholic school, they all had casts. Right, yeah. And I was like, I was never, particularly in elementary school, I was the antithesis of cool kid. Like, so they all had like there was two things that were always true. They had cool shoes and they had cool casts. They had <laughs> like Did they have the bowl cut? Bowl cuts? Yeah. Or the bleach <laughs> blonde was, yeah. bleach blonde bowl cut with the dark underneath yeah. hair yep. that mm-hmm. was pervasive. Oh yeah. Uh in that era of time. Yeah, yep. it was. Wearing Adidas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, or they had the, the Kevin Garnett shoes. That oh, were like yeah. all with jazz <laughs> yeah. and shit. I had I had Frank Thomas shoes. <laughs> I always got the the uh, the Grand Hills because they were the feelest you could get at like Kmart, Blue yeah, Man special yeah. or whatever the shacks. What was it your dad was praising for you? The Scarberries, Starberries, yeah, Starberries. the Stefan Marbury <laughs> shoes, the Starberries. <laughs> I had a That's, pair of the Starberries, probably. Yeah, it cracked me up because he loved them. They were like twenty bucks or something. They were they weren't bad looking. No, they weren't. You know what? I still have that gene because I collected on this last tour every pair of FUBUs that they sell at Walmart. Oh shit! I bought all of them. <laughs> I made it a pilgrimage <laughs> to like if they had a different pair because it costs like it. Basically, they pay you to buy them. So like I was like, <laughs> fuck it, I'll get all these. This is an easy thing to collect. I'm yeah. wearing one every day. Yeah. <laughs> I still go for a run sometimes in my FUBUs. I had a FUBU shirt that I got out of Play-Doh's closet in fifth grade. I had no idea what it meant, so sure. I, I loved it. It was yeah. wonderful. I was it's, like, that's I mean, a name I've popular. Heard. Yeah, it was. I mean, to be honest with you, it was always more popular for white kids to wear. Like, white kids loved FUBU way more than the black kids. I think probably. so, Because yeah. I went to predominantly a black school, and there were no kids wearing FUBU. But the, like, the <laughs> like, white huh? Kids would be like, hey, like hey, me, huh? Yeah. It had the street Kangle hat. <laughs> Just, yeah. mm. Kangle. Yeah. I never really did food, but I never did anything. I had like 
Air, Air Walks, those are the shoes, I think, the skate shoes. With the little, like, eye inside. Yeah, the yeah. yeah, had those and, the like... Fucking pillows. Yeah, <laughs> I just had those <laughs> clunking down the street, just I waving to folks. I think the most folks. embarrassing shoes I ever had was when I had, to, like, my parents got me Skechers. Oh, like, yeah, yeah. Ske- like, there was no... You're not ever getting a blowjob from a girl's shoes than having Skechers. Unless they're shape ups. Then, unless they're Skechers shape ups. And then <laughs> that would, didn't exist yeah, back then. Yeah, there no, was yeah. one. Yeah, no chance. There was one standard <laughs> form of yeah. Skechers yep. which looked like boats on your feet. Yeah, really. Yeah, that was, those were the only shoes that I could wear with my cast. <laughs> so I had <laughs> on top of everything, I was wearing Skechers. I got Jeff Goldblum's autograph, guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait for me. <laughs> Oh my god! Give me a blowjob, please. <laughs> Getting Gold Blue's autograph, wearing Skechers. <laughs> I'm never gonna Just get blown. Looking pensively out the window <laughs> at other kids playing. Oh, and I remember that's when I found my mom's typewriter. Uh, so and I like the idea of writing. Yeah, <laughs> you say that like that's like a like a rite of passage that everyone met when yeah. you found. Yeah. When did you find your mom's? Oh god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, when did she hand it down to me? When did she decree that I... <laughs> and uh, and so I, I was so angry at my fucking doctor that I wanted to just write an angry letter to him. But, for, but I was only writing things on the typewriter, like an idiot. And I don't know how to spell anything now, much less then. <laughs> so it must have just looked... I think my dad said he sent it, but I knew it wasn't spelled properly. But I was like, oh, that'll add effect because I'm angry. What are you person. saying? Yeah. I would just... How the fuck can oh, you? How could you do this to me? How could yeah. you do this to me? <laughs> like how, <laughs> you were shoving a camera up my ass, and now I can't move my leg. How does this? He goes. Happen? The body's a mystery. I don't know. Look at these goddamn <laughs> sketchers. Well, you still every now and then. I don't know if you get it as much, but you get Charlie horses in that leg. I now. do. Yeah. yeah, I often have Charlie horses. And they're in that extreme. Leg. The first time that I saw him, I was really concerned because you dropped to the ground and just started moaning in pain, and I didn't know what to do. And I remember like bringing in the other roommates, and they're just like, "Oh God, what's happening? You, you're in so much pain, you can't talk, and you're just like hitting your leg trying to make it work again." And it was terrifying. And then fast forward a few years later, and it happened to you like outside a restaurant in public, and you're screaming on on the ground, and I'm just laughing and clapping at you <laughs> because I know, oh, this is normal. You'll come back too. I haven't had one in a while, but those That's, were terrible. Ooh, I'm, boy. I'm still waiting for it to like kick in like while having sex or something. Thankfully, yeah. that's never happened. But I feel like that would be awful. Having sex? Or... <laughs> <laughs> hasn't kicked in yet. Still hasn't, hasn't happened yet. Yeah. Thankfully. No, the the uh, the Charlie horse because I don't know it would be God yeah. to try to play. Apologies, cool. by the way, to any listeners who were li- who were wearing Skechers right now, yeah. <laughs> or to the CEO this was, of Skechers pre Joe Montana doing those commercials. Yeah, yeah. So, and pre shape ups. Like, now they we have like, need to fancy find that. stores. Like you go right, to like yeah. the Burbank 16, and there's the the Ske- Skechers store. Yeah, there's never anyone in there, but there's but it exists. <laughs> yeah, tumbleweeds it only does. tumbleweeds, and <laughs> yeah, it does exist. So. I didn't realize that. Our show is sponsored by Skechers, yeah. by the way. Yeah. It's got to be here. By Skechers and Wheelies and, yeah. Stamps.com. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Particularly, like, the ads that always interest me are, like, ads on uh, improv shows I listen to. Because I'm mm-hmm. like, there's no way that anyone's parlaying this into a purchase. Yeah. Like, no one's yeah. listening to this going, like, oh, you're right. Yeah, that's... Yeah. I'm listening to this comedy improv stamps. to buy some stamps later. To, yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll yeah. see. But I think this show has a shot. Of oh it. yes, <laughs> this show is different. Have you said this? I think it does because you yeah. know what we've done here is we've talked about a lot of brands. Yeah, uh, we brought up a lot of situations in life that you might need to make purchases. Mm-hmm. Um, so for future episodes, you guys, for both of you, I really hope that you get a lot of sponsorship. Yeah, come in and uh, just know that I'll be I'll be buying whatever you put out there. If you get you know cheapo <laughs> air, I'll put in the code. <laughs> Uh, Perfect. Yeah, Travelocity, please. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone, please. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, this was good. Um, just say the first thing that comes into your head. Until, until next time. Go Bengals. Word. Go All Bengals. Right. Nice. Cool. Sweet. That was the episode. If you hadn't heard that one before, I hope you enjoyed it. If you had heard it, I will assume it's been a while since you heard it, so hopefully you uh, enjoyed it as a second listening. Just a reminder, please consider writing a review on iTunes of the show. It would be greatly appreciated. It means the world to me. It's nice to, to hear nice things about a thing I work hard on. That's, that's basically it. What can I say? I am guilty of wanting the validation of strangers, and uh, your help in this matter is greatly appreciated. That's the show this week. We will have a new episode coming next week. And until next Wednesday, keep laughing.